guys and welcome back to my face. So I know a lot of you guys are doing your GCSEs or your A-levels and you might have some mock exams coming up, especially after this break. Or you may just be starting to think already about actually properly revising for your real exams. But right now it's Christmas break. Or maybe it's some other break for you, I don't know, when you're actually watching this. But who wants to study over Christmas? No one. But in this video, I'm going to share with you some ways to make studying over the holiday just that little bit easier. And also how to balance your time so you don't miss out on that holiday part of the holiday. Wow, I just said holiday way too many times in a row. So subscribe to see some more videos like this and we'll get straight into the video. So firstly, plan your time. Now this is probably the most obvious tip and you probably almost definitely already knew it, but I'm sure you know it's a lot easier said than done. So what I want you to do is I want you to grab a piece of paper or an Excel spreadsheet on your computer and I want you to just list all of the tasks that you have to get done. So for example, all your homework, all of the modules you want to cover this holiday, any essays you have to do, etc. Then I want you to look at your calendar and I want you to decide which days you want to actually work and which way days de ways days you want to actually have off even if that's just the one Christmas day. <laughs> then I want you to count how many days you have that you have assigned to work and I want you to go back to your tasks and I want you to look at them and split them up evenly between the days. And don't forget to make sure that it's actually manageable. For example, don't plan to write about five essays in one day if that's not possible for you and then plan to do like one cue card on another day. Make sure that there is that balance of work. And if you guys aren't already, please subscribe because I think I'm going to be doing a more in-depth video on I'm planning in the future because I'm quite an organizational freak. I like having everything planned out and making sure that I have enough time to do everything that I need to get done. So yeah, subscribe to see that coming up. Okay, great. You have your basic study plan, but sticking to it is another thing altogether, which is why my number two tip is work hard, play hard. Now I'm sure we've all been in that situation where we know we have to study and we sit there with our books open on our desks. Then right next to us, we have our laptop open with YouTube or our phone with Snapchat. And when when we do this, we aren't fully focused. So here's what I want you guys to try doing. Work super hard for whatever period of time you guys know that you can focus for, and I want you to do it without distractions. It has to be quality working time. Then, give yourself a break. And in that break, here's the trick. Don't think about work whatsoever. Otherwise, it's not really a break, is it? Break isn't a break unless you are actually mentally relieving yourself of the workload that you know you have to do. And the good part is because you've done this, you know that you've worked so hard and solidly and that it was really quality work time when you were actually working. So when you do actually take your break, you don't feel bad or guilty about having it. Because quite frankly, you know you deserve it. That way, when your next study session rolls around, you will feel mentally relieved and refreshed and ready to start yet another quality working session and your brain's just gonna retain a lot more information and the reason I say this to work hard and then play hard is because quite frankly you get a lot more done in a shorter space of time rather than sitting there half into your work and half on social media it really just takes away your time so again staying focused for whatever period of time is a lot harder said than done how do we keep away distractions well this is where step three comes in discipline <laughs> Now, a lot of people tell me that I'm actually crazy when I say this, but honestly, best tip I can give anyone is turn off your Wi-Fi. Now, that doesn't have to be your actual router. I just mean like on your phone, turn off your Wi-Fi or on your computer, turn off your Wi-Fi. Unless, of course, you actually need that to do your work. And go give your phone to your parents or just put it in another room or something. And honestly, you just feel so much less inclined to touch your phone and check your messages and stuff if you basically just can't see it and if it's not even able to receive messages. Plus, you'll actually be surprised at how relieving it is not to to feel obliged to have to check your social media every five minutes. And I'm sure you have heard this whole tip to get rid of your phone many times before, but honestly, it is the best tip out there. That's why I'm saying it now. Now, discipline also involves locking your door. Well, not locking it, just at least closing it and blocking yourself out from any other distractions. So if you're starting a study session, go and tell your family, say, hey, look, I'm gonna be studying until 3 p.m. today. So don't come in, don't bother me until then. And then I want you to close your door, clear your workspace, set a timer, and then work. Number four, get outdoors. Now, I would say to exercise, because that would be ideal and it really wakes you up and gets you ready to study and it gets some of your blood flowing and you seem to retain a lot more information after exercise. However, I personally can't say that I've always exercised before studying and I know a lot of people out there, like you might even prefer to sit down and study rather than exercise. People hate it that much. So if you can, exercise. But if not, what I'm saying is that it's fine, it's okay, you don't have to exercise but still 
get outside. Breathe in some fresh air. Open up your mind and literally just look around you. So in your breaks, don't just go on your phone. Try to go outside. And what it does is it really sort of refreshes you and gets your head in sort of a different environment. Because if your idea of a break is just sitting at your desk and whipping out your phone in your break, you're still in the same environment and you're not sort of sectioning off your desk or your workspace as your working environment and you're sort of getting your brain used to merging both your work and play area together. Number five, make some tea or hot chocolate. I really feel like I have some hot chocolate right now because it's like Christmas time. I don't think we have any hot chocolate in the cupboard though. But yeah, make some of that and sit it beside you. And water, of course. It'll just make you feel a little more relaxed and remind you that you are at home studying and you are not sitting in an exam hall at school. Hopefully it will reduce your stress and it will make it that little bit easier to focus because I'm sure we all know what it's like when you're sitting in the exam hall and you're stressed and you literally your, your brain's just like a this is a visual representation. <laughs> so yeah, just having that little tea or hot chocolate there to remind you that you're actually at home, calm you down, really makes you studying that little bit better. <laughs> Number six, and now this is more Christmas specific, but get into some cozy Christmas pajamas or something like that, just something comfortable really. So I guess it's not that Christmas specific after all. Again, it's kind of just another tip to remind yourself that you are not in an exam, you are at home, you can calm down. It'll remind you you're on holiday, so work hard, but don't stress yourself out about it. And finally, number seven. Now, this is a personal favorite of mine because I absolutely love candles. So I might be a little bit biased, but I'd suggest to burn a candle or an incense burner to help freshen up your room and once again, calm you down. And if it's Christmas, you can burn a Christmas candle. Also, I can't say whether it works or not, but I've heard and I'm sure you've heard as well that if you smell the same scent just before an exam as when you were studying that specific topic, it's meant to trigger your brain and help Help you remember that specific subject. So maybe that's something to try to tie in with this whole candle burning business. So anyway guys, that is all I have for you today. I know a lot of it was probably stuff that you already actually knew, but hopefully it gave you some motivation because the satisfaction that you get in a day after achieving what you wanted to get done is just massive. Get your work done and get to the point where you feel like you deserve the break that you give yourself. Anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed and if you did, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and comment down below any more tips that you have and also if you have any video suggestions or requests. And of course, subscribe for a little bit more insight into my life, which is actually gonna be pretty interesting considering I'm actually moving to uni in just over a month. I'm gonna be going to study biomedical science at the University of Queensland. Also, I'm gonna be doing a bunch more videos like this, probably and hopefully more useful than this one was and a lot more specific ones as well, like subject specific. Anyway, nice seeing you and I will see you See you in the next one. Bye!